Uh, I'm presenting the abstract on behalf of uh, my colleague, first author, Dr. Peter Fredriksen, who unfortunately couldn't be here today uh, with us. Uh, I would like to thank the faculty uh, and the organizers for this opportunity to present uh, data from our cardiogenic shock animal model. Uh, I will give you some details uh, about the model uh, and then afterwards uh, present data regarding the cardiac energetics and systemic perfusion with VA ECMO and ICMILA. Uh, I have nothing to disclose. The research objectives in our studies it, uh, are based on uh, these patients uh, in the clinical situation with severe left ventricular dysfunction uh, and cardiogenic shock after myocardial infarction, where mechanical circulatory support to provide end organ perfusion are necessary. As uh, you all know when uh, pharmacological support or uh, minor invasive uh, support devices are not sufficient to provide end organ perfusion, VA ECMO can in some selected cases uh, be an option and usually provides good end organ perfusion. However, there are issues to be considered as we have already touched upon today. Uh, one issue uh, is the watershed phenomenon uh, it's illustrated by ultrasound uh, on this uh, image uh, where the blood flow from the ECMO circuit meets blood flow from the left ventricle in the aorta, and that might uh, compromise the organ supply, uh, the oxygen supply, sorry, uh, to the coronary arteries and dependent uh, on the location of the water sheet, uh, maybe also to the CNS and the upper body. Another issue uh, is illustrated uh, by the pressure volume loop uh, from one of our previous studies. It uh, illustrates the inadequate emptying of the left ventricle during uh, VA ECMO support. Uh, the loop shows uh, the very large volume uh, in the ventricle and the very low stroke volume. So this leads to the question, how do we unload the left ventricle? The hypothesis in our study was that the combination of VA ECMO and Impeller CP, ECMILA, improves cardiac energetics without compromising the end organ perfusion in a Puchin model of the cardiogenic shock. This is a picture uh, of one of our animals just before we start instrumentation in the operating room, and it takes us to the model. We use uh, Danish Landrex picks approximate weight, uh, 70 kilograms, uh, and before we do the instrumentation, we use a amiodarone to avoid the ventricular arrhythmias. This is an overview uh, of the uh, vascular axes. On the neck, we induce uh, the pack. Uh, we have an axis for uh, the conductance catheter uh, in the left ventricle. And on the other side of the neck, we uh, use a cut-down technique to place a flow probe around the carotid artery. And as you can see in the back of the picture, the monitor gives us flow data throughout the study period. In both groins, we make access for the VA ECMO. We also have a renal vein access, and we have an arterial access for the coronary angiogram and for the placement of the impeller CP. We use a midline incision to do echocardiographic images during the study, where we can place the the echo probe directly on the diaphragm to get good quality images, which is very difficult in this uh, PIC model otherwise. Uh, this is an overview of uh, some of the data collection uh, we get from the conductance catheter, of course, the PVA, stroke work, LV, and diastolic pressure, uh, and the picture shows how we follow the pressure volumes loop during the whole study period. From the pack, we get the continuous cardiac output measurements and the SVO2, and we do blood gas analysis with, from the arterial side, the renal vein, and from the pulmonary artery. After instrumentation, we do uh, what we call the controlled cardiogenic shock induction. Uh, we use uh, these uh, small particles to do embolization of the left main coronary artery. Uh, they are small flakes of the Pinot Valley alcohol, and we inject them every third minute uh, until we reach a state of cardiogenic shock. 
the shock definition in our studies is a 50% or more uh, reduction in the cardiac output or SVO2 from baseline or an absolute SVO2 uh, below 30%. Uh, during the shock induction process, we are guided by the SVO2 uh, as illustrated on this screen print where you can follow the blue line and see the gradual reduction in SVO2 during a one hour of shock induction. Uh, the yellow line below uh, shows the corresponding drop in cardiac output during the shock induction. When we use, as we have heard before, uh, this uh, stepwise controlled cardiogenic shock indu induction, we can go from this uh, normal baseline left uh, ventricle to a state of severe cardiogenic shock without the, a great risk of losing animals to circulatory collapse uh, in the induction process. In this protocol, we have enrolled uh, 14 animals Today, uh, I will present data on 12 animals, since the last two was only done a few days ago. As I have just described, we induce a cardiogenic shock with embolization and afterwards support the animal on VA ECMO. Then we further embolize until we have a decoupling of the LV and the aortic pressure. Afterwards, uh, animals in the VA ECMO arm are continuously followed uh, and on EV VA ECMO alone, and at this time point, we placed in the ECMELA group the Impella CP. Afterwards, we follow the animal for four hours on mechanical support. Uh, this is a picture of an animal uh, in, uh, in the uh, ECMELA group, and that gives us, uh, leads us to the results. We had a mean arterial pressure uh, with a value of 51 millimeters of mercury in both groups at the stage of cardiogenic shock. But after four hours of mechanical support, the uh, mean arterial pressure was a bit higher and significantly in the uh, Igmela group with 69 millimeters of mercury versus 64 in the ECMO group. Uh, the norepinephrine effusion was equal in the two groups. Uh, this is an illustration of the VA ECMO flow uh, during mechanical support. The flow was equal uh, at the state of cardiogenic shock, but decreased uh, in the ECMELA group uh, during the support period to a level around uh, 3 liters per minute, uh, and in the uh, ECMO group, uh, 3.7 liters per minute. Total cardiac work calculated as a pressure volume area times heart rate was significantly lower in the ECMELA group. Uh, the greatest reduction was in the first hour of mechanical support and afterwards a stabilized level. End organ perfusion was with equal uh, arterial lactate in both groups. It was elevated but equally. The mixed venous SVO2 was not statistically different between the two groups, but increased during the mechanical support period. The carotid blood flow also uh, increased uh, during the mechanical support period with about uh, 100 milliliters in each group, but it was equally uh, between uh, ECMILA and VA ECMO. Renal perfusion uh, here showed as the renal SVO2 was with no different, but increased during the first hour of support and then had a stabilized level during the rest uh, of the support period. Urine output uh, was numerically a bit higher in the ECMELA group, but there was no statistical difference. So to conclude, uh, in the abstract, uh, total cardiac work was lower in the ECMELA group compared to VA ECMO, indicating more appropriate cardiac energy netics. And importantly, we had an equally end organ perfusion. I would like to thank uh, our team, especially the program leaders, Professor Hanne Raun and Professor Jakob Müller, and also a great thanks to our funders, uh, the Danish Heart Foundation, Abiumed Capital of Region uh, of Denmark, and the Odense University Hospital. <laughs>